America, you will see things that you can understand how can this physically be possible? How can a resource be taken away just like that? But, God, but even as it was with Israel, while Egypt was in sickness, they were in drought, they didn't have water, and all these things, Israelites were right there, full of prosperity, receiving from God, because God had his hand on them. So what God says now, in Goshen, that's right. So what God says, that if your name is in the book of life, whether you're red, yellow, black, or white, God says that he will have you in my hand. Amen. I will have you in my hand. And I will preserve you as I send plagues regarding this nation's superiority complex. Okay? Hallelujah. Y'all with me so far? All right. Praise God. Look at this here. Let me just talk about this for a minute. And there will probably be another five or minutes out of here. We'll be out of here. God says that abundance is in not only in Christ, excuse me, abundance is only in Christ, not the American dream. The American, you can turn it off. The American dream, for many, has been a nightmare. The Ameri so, in other words, people have come to America, or some have found themselves on American soil, being butchered, being separated from their families, being enslaved, being oppressed, and being crushed, and being limited, and being given a tiny bit of morsel to eat to starve halfway, not full way. That is not a dream that anybody wants to partake of. Amen. So God says he's exposing that. He said the American dream has been a false narrative, okay, especially for those who find themselves considered as black Americans. Now, I'm not here to promote a pro-black national whatever, okay? I'm not here to denounce any other group. God, you know, basically what happens, if you have all these different groups, every group needs to be strong for the Lord. And God keeps showing me that in this dream, and when he showed me this dream was very terrible, he showed me that there's a weakness happening upon the black citizens of America. Mm -hmm. They need to be strengthened mm -hmm. so that, in other words, if you have a bridge and you got pillars, if you have a bridge, a pillar, a pillar, a pillar, a pillar, the whole of that bridge, if one of the pillars is very weak, mm -hmm. has continued been battered, mm -hmm. then there's going to be instability in the entire bridge that people need to get across. So God says the part that is really becoming very, that has been weakened, that needs to be strengthened, particularly is black citizens. This is not a pro-black message. It's an equality message. Liberty and justice for all is what the word of the Constitution says. But God says, since you won't honor your own word, I'm going to take my word and supersede it over your word and strengthen the part that is weak. You hear that? Hope that makes sense to you, okay? God showed me this. He said, there's other ethnicities that can come to the USA, build great enterprises that are respected and handed down to the generations of their families or ethnic groups, okay? And what happens is, you know, these people from other nations and other countries are given great access and respect, even to the demise of American equality, okay? America... And many blacks have been known, excuse me, America for many blacks, like I said, have not been known as a melting pot, but as a boiling oven of hatred. See, look at this here. Let's turn your Bibles here to the good news part. Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 61. I want to good read news, this here. Good news. good news, good news, good news. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. All right, I'm going to read this. It's several verses, but you're going to enjoy this right here. In verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, to the poor, to the afflicted. Meek, poor, afflicted. 
afflicted. Does that sound like someone who's wealthy? Does that sound like someone who wouldn't feel like they're superior to somebody else? Does that sound like somebody who feel like these people need to be exterminated as weeds? No. Afflicted. Poor and the meek. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and opening of the prison and of the eyes of those who are bound. Now, who are bound? Uh, now, we do a lot of research and we do a lot of things in the government where we study, you know, different ethnic groups and we study different households and things like that. In one household, the average wealth in one household is like $110,000 per household. And on the other side over here, you have the average wealth in the other one might even be 5000 that's a major disparity, being in the same country, trying to do the same thing. Okay, I'm not going to say who is who, but that's the issue that there's people who are afflicted. How many people know that there's people who can't even barely put bread on their table? Yeah. There are people who work 60 hours a week and can't even take their kids to the right school. There are people who sit there and work and work two or three jobs and cannot get the ends to meet. And then there's, on the other hand, there's people who are, who are privileged. They get this job. They sit down there. They twirl their fingers. They bring their dogs to work, you know, do crazy stuff, and get this big pay and hardly even work and look down upon others. Mm -hmm. God says he's coming for that. Mm -hmm. he is. He's coming for that. Mm -hmm. He says that he's come to proclaim liberty, physical and spiritual, mm -hmm. and soulless, I would say. Come and liberate the mind. Amen. Amen. So those ethnicities who have been bound, mm -hmm. generations have been bound, who feel that they can't achieve. God says, I'm coming to free you from that bondage, mm -hmm. okay? Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of God, okay? And look at this here. Let's go down to verse 3. Oh, excuse me, verse 2. To proclaim the example year of the Lord, the year of his favor. A, and the day of vengeance of our God. Vengeance upon what? If he's coming, if he's coming to heal the afflicted and to heal the brokenhearted, and he's coming to be vengeance, who do you think that vengeance is going to? Those who are acting superior with the God complex, looking down upon the poor and the meek. That's where the vengeance is going. Okay? Look at this here. Look at this here. And it said to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3. To grant consolation to those who mourn in Zion. To give them an ornament, a garment, or a diadem of beauty instead of ashes. And the oil of joy instead of mourning. The garment expresses of praise instead of heavy, burdened, and failing spirit. Who in this country is heavy and burdened and failing? Those who have been economically oppressed. Those who have been racially oppressed. Those who have been spiritually oppressed. Jesus is coming to heal all those oppressions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they may be called oaks, tall oaks of righteousness. Oaks of righteousness, mm -hmm. lofty, strong, yes. and magnificent, yes. distinguished for uprightness, yes. Thank you. justice, and right standing with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Yes. Now, verse 7, look at this here. It says in, in Isaiah 61, verse 7, Instead of your former shame, instead of your former shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. Twofold recompense. If they took your whole generation and enslaved your generation for years, for 400 years, and Jesus comes to give a twofold recompense, you will have 800 years of blessing. Real simple. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus.
Jesus. Come here. Come here. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God so much for this word right here. Amen. Being redeemed from racial ruin. I just want to drop one nugget because I went to bed with it. And it's settled in my spirit, and it really speaks to what he just said. Mm -hmm. And the scripture, it came to mind, it was, uh, I believe, Philippians, I believe, 2, where it said that Jesus endured the cross mm -hmm. despising ah. the shame. Oh, yeah. He endured the cross despising the shame. The and huh. the Holy Spirit the said yeah. to me last night, he said, "You people don't Enjoy. get it. People don't get it that Jesus hated the shame. He hated it. He yeah. hated what was done to him. But yeah. God said he hated the shame, but he traded the shame for your shine. I said, oh! God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The Holy Spirit said, mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to trade your shame, Linda. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to trade your shame uh, so on. you can have my shine. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh my God! And the, the scripture today talked about how the how how we will shine like stars. How he would shine like stars, and that just came to my mind. I just say, I Lord, I thank you for the word today that God is trading our shame for His shine. Hallelujah! God is trading our shame for His shine. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Praise God. So we thank God. We thank God for all what He's doing. Amen. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. So what happened in the word, it says, instead of your former shame. Now we know there's spiritual things, there's all these things going on, but if you look at America, who has been shamed in America? Who has felt full of guilt in America? Who has felt like they've been afflicted in America? Who not who felt like it, who has actually been afflicted? We're the mothers who lost their children in the streets. The mothers who lost their husbands. There's a man of God who was sent to jail for 37 and a half years for being in the wrong place. Didn't he know what was going on? Like, what's going on? And the judge insisted upon him being in there for 37 and a half years. He was 26 with a wife and a newborn child. He had another, the judge died, and another person said to reopen that case and found that he was not guilty and he's out wow. free now. Wow. So now, in his 40s, after 20 some years in prison for no reason, a black man was, was amazed at the fall season of leaves. Couldn't believe how beautiful his fall looked. Couldn't believe how beautiful the sky was. So, in other words, all the shame he dealt with being in prison in that dark, confined environment. He has now been released. He is free. And now he's exploring the world and finding the beauty of the world. That's what God is doing for those who are afflicted. So those who are listening, if you're afflicted today, if you're afflicted economically, if you're afflicted racially, if you're afflicted financially, if you're afflicted even in the church, God says he's removing the shame. He's wiping it away. It's like how they wipe the window. They wipe the window. You know, God's wiping the window. I can see clearly now. You don't see shame on your window, but you see a clear door. You see a clear access, and you can see out into the environment, and you can see the glory of the Lord. 